man, we have ourselves a lot of kits these days. It seems like every component I put in my design comes with a development or an evaluation kit or board. I've got embedded processor kits, FPGA kits, of course, but it seems like now we even have kits for stuff like capacitors. Really? What I do need kits for, badly, it turns out, is interconnect. Remember those old days when any kind of cable or connector would do, and we just got the cheapest whatever? Yeah, those days are gone. Now our interconnect plays a key role in signal integrity, cost, and just about every aspect of our electronic system. We need to be able to design in our interconnect with some hands-on confidence, right? Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk, and my cry has been answered. Samtech has some great development and evaluation kits for their interconnect products. My guest today is Matthew Burns from Samtech, and we're going to take a closer look at some of the cool options for interconnect kits. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about Samtech's development and evaluation kits. Hi, Matt. Thank you so much for joining me. Hey, Amelia. It's great to see you again. Okay, so these days, I think it's more true than ever before that there is no design without a design kit. Now, I know Samtech has a lot of different offerings in this arena, but what specifically are we looking at here? Amelia, Samtech has put a lot of focus on developing a complete portfolio of evaluation development kits for a variety of our products. We really started these efforts probably about three, four years ago with a handful of boards. We've continued to make investments and design solutions for new products as they come out. And now we have close to 30 different SI evaluation or development kits. We've broken these down into four distinct areas, signal integrity evaluation kits for our board-to-board interconnect. We also have SI evaluation kits for our twin X flyover cable assemblies, component kits for a lot of our standard connectors. And we also have a number of active kits that are targeted at our Firefly micro flyover system our active optics, a mid-board transceiver. And we also have a lot of kits that complement FPGA development boards via the FMC or FMC Plus interface. Cool. So Matt, what's all included in each kit? That's a question that we get a lot, Amelia, for our SI evaluation kits. One of the things that we want to ensure is that the lab equipment that our customers use to evaluate our, our interconnect is the same as what we have when we test our solutions in our lab. So we have a calibration board that will calibrate the VNAs and the, and the TDRs to the same settings that we have. Okay. That's included with each kit. We also provide the evaluation platform itself. We also provide a USB flash drive that provides essential support documentation. The BRD file for the PCB design. We offer a schematic signal mapping showing where the traces go. And then lastly, a test result that shows the expected results that our customers can expect when they use one of our SI evaluation platforms. Cool. Okay, Matt, let's start with that first set of kits you mentioned, the SI evaluation kits for board-to-board applications. So what exactly are we looking at here? Well, Amelia, you know that Samtech's history has been built upon board-to-board interconnect. Sure. So as we continue to release 56 gigabit per second, 112 gigabit per second interconnect solutions, our customers are asking for test platforms to enable the performance that we advertise. Sure. So one of our new solutions on the market is our Novaray 112 gigabit per second PAM4 extreme density arrays. As we've launched this product, we've also come out with a number of Novaray mezzanine SI evaluation kits. Just briefly, you can see from the picture that each of these kits contains two PCBs. One of them has the uh, NVAM series Novaray terminal. The uh, second has the NVAF Novaray socket. The Novaray family has been designed to support various stack heights. Okay. Seven millimeter and 10 millimeter. So our boards can support both solutions. And then as with all of our kits, we route high speed different pairs from the Precision RF to the connector, and we can support a variety of RF interconnect depending upon the type of test equipment that our customers have. Sure. This particular platform, as we mentioned, has 16 differential pairs, and they will all operate at up to 112 gigabit PAM4 data rates. So what about edge card connectors? What have you got for me here? 
with a lot of new fabric technologies on the market, PCI Express, Gen Z, they're going in faster and faster data rates. So not only are we having to design edge card interconnect to meet those performance expectations, but we're also providing SI evaluation platforms to test those solutions. Sure. One of our newest solutions there is our HSEC6 DV SI evaluation platform. This is really targeted at our HSEC6 series of edge card connectors, which do conform to the Gen Z electromechanical interface. Okay. This is a two PCB system, and we route a total of six pairs. And again, this will perform to expected data rates at 56 GPM4 and some of the other protocols that you'd find on an edge card connector. Okay. Another edge card solution that we have is the HSEC 8 dash DP SI evaluation kit. Samtech's portfolio of edge card connectors range from 0.4 millimeter spacing all the way up to one millimeter spacing. This particular platform is a 0.8 millimeter pitch. And you can see from the illustration, this has two PCBs, routes four pairs between the PCBs, and again, offers a really nice test platform for customers that are interested in testing out that product family. So, Matt, what about that next category, cable kits? Now, what exactly are we talking about here? Well, as we've talked about in other Chalk Talks, Amelia, as data rates get faster, the the trace lengths, typically, that they go in PCBs are shorter. Sure. You can't fight Newton. Nope. (laughs) Right? We can't can't (laughs) defy physics. So in more and more applications, customers are interested in getting their high speed or their high frequency data out of the PCB and, and into a cable assembly. Right. Not only do we offer... Uh, high-speed twin X, but we also offer a lot of high-frequency RF oh, okay. solutions as well. So I've heard about Bullseye before, and that's been featured on Xilinx FPGA boards. But oh, Matt, what do you got for me here? That's a great question. We've been supporting the Bullseye high-performance test point system within the FPGA ecosystem of evaluation boards for, for some time. Uh, our first-generation products of Bullseye probably came out more than 10 years ago. Wow. Up until a few years ago, the frequency range of Bullseye was about 20 gigahertz. We've really focused on coming up with a second generation of solutions to increase the performance. So we have a new 50 gigahertz Bullseye SI evaluation platform that's illustrated here. As you remember from previous conversations, Amelia, the benefit of Bullseye is that it provides provides a very compact form factor for breaking out test signals from ASICs or other advanced uh, silicon. Yeah. In particular to Xilinx and other FPGA manufacturers, Intel, Acronix, whatever, you can use Bullseye to route dozens of high-speed transceivers, mm-hmm. 56G, 112 gigabit PAM4 transceivers from the FPGA to a bullseye, but provides a four-to-one PCB space savings versus a discrete SMA is on the PCB itself. So this particular platform is the first bullseye platform that we have that operates up to 50 gigahertz. It does come with one of our BE40A cable assemblies and bulkheads. This particular platform has both the calibration spec and eight total signals that break out from the bulkhead to the SMAs. It will support a ton of high performance traces. Okay, so Matt, in other Chalk Talks, we've talked about front panel and twin X panel solutions. What's new here? Front panel MSA solutions are very popular in data center, 1U 19 inch rack mount server applications. Sure. Or twitches or, or whatever the case may be. So Samtech has a number of MSA compliant interconnect that focuses on QSFP and QSFPDD. Okay. So we call those our flyover solutions. This slide illustrates two of our newest platforms for the double density. QSF PDD has the same mechanical form factor as QSFP, but it offers twice the number of ports or channels and also twice the performance. So instead of having the signals route through the QSFP cage and, and route down to the PCB, our flyover cable assemblies attach directly to the contacts of the edge card connector within the QSF PDD cage. Okay. On the back end of those cable assemblies, that's where we can place our Nova Ray or our Accelerate HP or Accelerate HD interconnect that would be placed right next to the ASIC or FPJ within the system. So in these particular kits, you can see that we have both a FQSF PDD to Nova Ray evaluation kit and a FQSF PDD to Accelerate kit. Both these are very popular within the data center. You know, they route eight total pairs in a platform that mimics a front panel to mid-board Twin X flyover cable assembly. Okay. In addition, we get a lot of requests from our customers when it comes to specific Twin X flyover cable assemblies that we have. Yeah. So our Accelerate flyover is a cable assembly that has Accelerate on one end and Accelerate on the second end. Okay. So the new Accelerate flyover SI evaluation kit enables customers to use the same PCB on either end. And then the kit comes with three standard cable lengths for the ARC 6 series, 8 inch, 12 inch, and 18 inch. So it's really a a nice solution for enabling customers to look at not only does the Accelerate cable assembly make sense for their solution, but what length do they need? Right. If customers need cable lengths that are 
shorter or longer than the 8, 12, or 18 inches that come with the kit, we are more than willing to provide you know, samples at the length that they request. Similar to Accelerate, we also have recently released a Novaray Flyover SI Evaluation Kit. This uses the same PCBs as the Novaray Mezzanine SI Evaluation Kit. However, we replace the NVAM and NVAF interconnect series with NVAMC series of connectors on either side of the PCB. And then between those, we add a NVAC series Novaray cable assembly. Similar to Accelerate, if customers are interested in custom cable lengths, we can support that. This does route a higher number of pairs, 16 pair total from one board to the other. Because Novaray is our highest performance interconnect family, this solution is generating a lot of interest into the market right now. Cool. So Matt, I've seen a trend toward cabled backplane solutions. What do you guys got there? That's a great question. And there's no doubt that different system architectures are going from a traditional you know, right angle or vertical or coplanar backplane into a cabled backplane. The same similar tech that we just talked about, the flyover concept, mm -hmm. using ultra low skew twin axe flyover cable assemblies, we can just send the signals over longer lengths with improved SI performance. In previous Chalk Talks, we had talked about our XMX backplane SI evaluation kit. What we've done in this kit is basically take two of those test cards okay. and we provide a number of standard length EBCM series standard cable assemblies that can plug between the two test cards. Okay. So using this test platform, we've actually had customers test XMAX backplane cable assemblies. <laughs> we've actually tested up to three meters, 112 gigabit per second performance. So we have a lot of confidence in this performance of this platform. We have a number of customers that are using this kit to prove the viability of cabled backplane architectures within a data center application. Sure, that makes sense. So, Matt, I know you guys have a huge role in FPGA and optics as well. What kind of development kits do you have here? Again, Amelia, you're always full of good questions. I am. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate your self-confidence as well, too. As we've discussed in other Chalk Talks, Samtech has been at the forefront of promoting FMC, FMC Plus applications right. for FPGA evaluation platforms. We also have our Firefly micro flyover system, which we've discussed in previous Chalk Talks. And more recently, we've expanded the kits that are available for both applications. Great. Okay. So let's talk about Firefly a little bit. What's new on this horizon? In recent years, we've expanded the performance of Firefly to operate up to 28 gigabits per second per channel. We had been using a test kit that had aged gracefully, <laughs> but it, we just weren't able to get the performance that we needed to have in an old platform. Okay. So recently, towards the end of 19, and as we move into the first quarter of 2020, we've released our 28 gigabit per second Firefly evaluation kit. This provide not only the performance enhancements that we needed over the old platform, but it's also updated the testing interface or GUI interface that customers use to test Firefly. If you look on here, you'll see that we've actually gone to a web-based GUI. There's actually a Raspberry Pi nice. that comes with the kit, and we use that to host our interface software that is used to configure the functions available on Firefly. This platform can support both the optical Firefly, which is active, but we can also use it to test some of our copper Firefly cable assemblies as well. So this is really one of our most versatile platforms. Since it's been released, the customer interest in it has been faster than we expected, but we're real excited to get an updated Firefly evaluation kit out to the market. So Matt, you just mentioned FMC and FMC Plus standards. So what's new here? We've had a ton of requests for FMC Plus accessories. One of the ones that we've just released is an FMC Plus extender card okay. that's pictured here. This is really targeted at test scenarios where customers are using a very expensive FPGA evaluation platform that may yeah. cost anywhere between five to $15,000 as their test platform. Right. <laughs> and their FMC Plus connectors on the test card are wearing out. Mm. I don't know about you. I don't like reworking a $15,000 FPGA board. No, thank you. This thing is very <laughs> cost effective versus yeah. that cost. So right. by adding this to the FMC Plus and then adding their test cards to the top of this, that saves money in the long run for test applications. This does conform completely to the FMC Plus extender card. We've run data rates in excess of 28 gigabit per second through this. This supports the 24 high-speed multi-gigabit transceivers that are called out in the HSPC portion of the Vita 57.4 standard. And as you can see, it extends the life of the FPGA carry card HSP connectors on test platforms in the scenario that we mentioned. In addition, we've had a number of FMC and FMC Plus daughter cards. Our modules are available. We have an FMC Plus HSPC loopback. We have an FMC Plus HSPC HSPC loopback card. We also have our 14 gigabit per second Firefly FMC, which we've had on the market probably for about three years. We also have our 28 gigabit per second Firefly FMC Plus 
that's been on the market for some time. One addition I didn't mention here in the presentation, don't have pictured, we are working on a new version of our 25 gigabit per second Firefly FMC Plus platform. The current one supports Fireflies that are in a by four bi-directional configuration. Yeah. This new card will support the by 12 Firefly that supports half duplex communication. Okay. So another trend we've been seeing these days is PCIe over fiber. So what's Samtech working on here? We have our PCUO version of our Firefly, which is a optical transceiver, mid-board optical transceiver targeted at running PCI Express over fiber optics. So that supports PCI Express Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3, and we're this close to releasing PCI Gen 4 version of that card. In addition to the optics, we also have adapter cards that we can plug into a PCI Express root complex and a PCI Express endpoint that makes running PCI Express over fiber optics transparent to the end system. Gotcha. So if you've got a PCI root complex on your server desk and you need to have an endpoint 100 meters away, the combination of our PCUO and PCOA solutions work ideal for that. Our current PCO a product supports PCI Gen 3. We are in development with PCI Gen 4 of the PCOA. We expect to have that out by summer of 2020. So stay tuned and we'll get more information on that as it's released. Excellent. Well, Matt, this was a bit to take in today. So can you recap your main points for me? As we mentioned earlier, Samtech has a number of evaluation and development kits that we've been working on uh, over the last several years. All these solutions simplify design and, re and reduce time to market. We're able to break down our kits into four basic areas, SI evaluation kits for board-to-board -board applications, SI evaluation kits for cables, our optical and FPGA kits, and also our component kits. For technical support, your listeners can email Samtech at kitsandboards at samtech.com. The publicly available information on our kits are available at samtech.com slash kits. Excellent. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me yet again, Matt. Thanks, Amelia. It's always fun talking with you. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about Samtech's development and evaluation kits. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talk section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.